Hey guys, back again. It's October 20th, and this is the 20th horror movie review for the month of October in 2020. And this movie is Audition. And I talked about this movie a little bit in my director series about Takashi Miike, one of my favorite directors. And I want to talk about it a little more. I did not watch it recently. I might have only actually watched this movie once. I don't know. I feel like I've maybe watched it more, but... It's been a long time, but I do remember some more scenes. I didn't go into a whole lot of detail about the movie, I don't think. But I'm going to give some more scenes and some more reasons why I like it. And I think that this movie could be in my top five horror movies. Uh, greatest horror movies of all time, really. Um, so, you know, I keep saying my top ten, and it's like, <laughs> this one's really high up there. And I think that even... Uh, Session 9, the last one I talked about might even be there, but anyways, this is going to be about audition. So, it's directed by Takashi Miike, which I'm biased, that already makes it special to me. Uh, it's not the first movie that I saw of his, I don't think. I think I might have seen Itchy the Killer first, I don't know, um, really, but... Anyway, it is a movie about a guy who's like a widower, and he's trying to find a new wife, basically... And I think he's pretty wealthy or whatever. He's kind of older. But he, a friend, I think a friend decides to help him. Um, they're going to stage like an audition for like a movie. And they're going to find him like the perfect wife. Like all of his preferences is what they're going to be looking for in like the actresses. Like, so the women are going to, they're going to have like so many women come up. <clears throat> And say, you know, what they like, what they're good at, or whatever else. And if they fit, like, his description of what he likes, then um, then he's going to try to get her to marry him or whatever. And so there's, like, a panel of people reviewing him. I think he's one of them. And I think in this trailer in the background it shows, like, flashes of different women being interviewed. And that's basically kind of that process. But finally, when he comes across this girl, I don't know what her name is, um, he's like instantly in love, and he's like, she's the one for me. And so he sets it up, ends up going on a date with her or whatever, and um, I think that he might reveal it to her eventually that he's really, that, you know, it's all kind of a scam, and he's just really looking for love or whatever. Um, but... So everything starts out kind of like a drama, kind of romance type movie. And I don't remember what her personality is really like. I don't remember if she's really quiet. I think that she talks, but I don't know. I don't remember if she's like really charming, saying that she really likes him and everything. Anyway, she pretty much has him hooked. And there's basically a scene that I think maybe one of the first scenes that kind of starts a change in the tone is a scene where he's trying to call her. I think he's trying to call her for, like, a second date or something. And um, it shows her, like, in her room in her house, and she's basically just, like, sitting by the phone, like she's just waiting for it to ring. And uh, I don't remember if she picks up or not. And I, I don't know if it's kind of like the feeling, like, like she knows that she's got him hooked, like a kind of like a predator with its prey or something, <laughs> like he's trapped, and she's just, like, waiting, like, she's already got him or um or like she's it's just kind of strange because she doesn't have anything going on in her life and she's just like sitting there waiting by the phone but it's that scene right there where like there's that potato sack and i think that's when the phone rings like i said i don't even remember if she answers it or if she just lets it ring i don't know but then we see that potato sack in the background and it just, and it moves and it kind of like cuts the scene, I think. And you're kind of like, well, what the hell was that? Like, what's going on there? It's kind of weird, you know, if they're sitting there with the phone ringing or whatever in the, the potato sack. Well, we find out about her past that she was basically like tortured and abused as a young child. And I don't remember all the details. I don't remember if she had, if it was like her father that did it. I don't think so. I don't know what happened to her parents, but there was some guy that he, like, had her dance for him, so, like, she was, like, a ballerina, I think he played the piano or something, but, but he also, like, abused her, he bruised her, and I was thinking about this on the way home, but I want to say that I think that he 
stuck like a hot poker, like upper vagina or something. <laughs> like, it doesn't show that or anything like that. But I mean, I think it shows like the hot poker, and he's like, "Spread your legs" or something. Like, it is a Takashi Miike movie, so he goes he goes over the edge on stuff like that. But, but we see like these flashback scenes, and I think they're kind of different. Uh, they're not like black and white, but I think they're kind of like a different color. You kind of get the idea, like the imagery that this is like in the past of her and. And and with her dancing and stuff, it's kind of like beautiful, but it's like disturbing with the abuse that's going on and stuff. Anyway, I think like as she grows up, eventually she kills that guy. I think she kills him with like piano wire, and, like wraps it around his neck, and she like moves it back and forth until like he decapit she decapitates him. I think. Um, but I'm not sure about that because. The guy, the the thing in the potato sack is a person, and I don't remember if that's another person or if that's the guy. I think that's somebody else, but I don't remember how he got involved. Basically, later on, we see what's in the potato sack, and it's a guy, and he crawls out, and um, she has like a dog bowl with like vomit or something. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly how that happens but i think that there's like a dog bowl with vomit in it and she's basically like feeding him like a dog and this guy has like no like i'm giving major spoilers but his uh, limbs are cut off like his arms i think and his legs are just like stubs so he's just like crawling with his stubs like out of the sack and um she also like cut out his tongue i think um something like that so he goes over and he's like lapping up this vomit or whatever. Like that's how he stays alive. It's sick. It's sick as hell. It's sick as hell to watch it. And uh, and it's so disturbing and scary. But you find like this woman's like a monster. It's like what the? What's going on here dude? Like this guy is like oblivious to that. So you're seeing like what's going on. This her like guy that's in love with her doesn't know. But he starts wanting to know about her past, and I think he starts kind of uncovering this stuff. And maybe that's how we know about her past abuse and stuff. I don't remember. He gets, like, led down the trail. Well, let's go ahead and give spoilers in the endings, because besides, like, the phone call scene, and besides the guy coming out of the sack, what I remember, and besides the abuse and stuff, um, there's the final scene where she goes after her lover, like, in his home, and I don't remember how it comes down to it. I think he might know that she's a psycho by then, but it's, like, too late or something. But she basically, like, breaks into his house and, like, knocks him out or something. She has, like, a, basically, like, a toolkit that she brings with her, like, a bag, like, a, some kind of surgery bag or something, and, um... She has, uh, something that she injects him with that makes it to where he can't move or anything but he can still feel pain and then she starts to torture him basically she starts taking these needles like these long needles and starts like pushing him through his skin and we watch him like slowly go into his skin you know some kind of sharp thing and uh kind of like acupuncture needles or something and she's just like pushing him through his skin and I think she, like, pushes him, like, in the corners of his eyes and stuff. And, like, he can't move or anything. He's just like, uh, uh, like, he just, he can feel the pain, but. And as she's pushing him, and, like, one of the, you know, major things about this movie is that, like, it's in Japanese. It's all in Japanese. I need to say that, too, because Takashi Miike is a Japanese director, and this has English subtitles, but. When she's pushing him, she's like, kitty, 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 because I guess in Japanese that means deeper, 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 and she's pushing him, and she's like, kitty, 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 kiri, kiri, like K-I-R-I, kitty, 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 but she's, she's like doing it like so happily and like so gently, like she's getting pleasure out of this, like, kitty, 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 and you know, while this guy's like being tortured and it's so like sadistic. And then she tries to hack off some parts with the piano wire. Um, she has, like, a, trying to use it on his leg or something. Like, she's trying to... She start, She does cut off some of his body parts. I don't remember what, though. If, like, his arms or his hands. 
but she has like the piano wire and she's like doing it like happily like gleefully like like, and it's just like cutting through his arm and um somehow though i don't remember if he has like a son or a daughter or kids and they were kind of like cautious about her but somehow they intervene or something i think they end up coming in and killing her or capturing her i don't remember what happens at the end i don't remember like I'm pretty sure she dies, but I don't know how. And the police show up or something. Like, I think so the guy remains alive, but he lost, he loses a limb or something because she already has cut him off. But that's basically it. And it's just a story of just be careful of, you know, who you're falling in love with or whatever, because you don't know what in the hell that person might be doing. I haven't even opened this Blu-ray yet, and because, you know, it's Takashi Miike, like, the directing is wonderful, like, the visuals and everything are awesome. And so this is her, this is an Arrow release Blu-ray, they do some special editions that I have. But it's kind of like a cartoonish kind of look of her, with, like, the needle that has that stuff that I told you knocks him out, but doesn't, uh, he feels the pain keeps him awake um so i'm gonna go ahead and open this actually and let's see if there's anything inside which i don't think there is but then i'll read the back of it too it's kind of hard to read well not really hard to but there's a little thing kind of in the way here ah i'm gonna use my teeth that's what we do around here but yeah i really wanted to watch this again you know like before doing a review on it but there will be another review, but I just needed to make this video real quick for get it finalized and uploaded before midnight. Just get a little unpackaging here. Let's see if there's any surprise posters or anything. No, not really. But there's that. It's Blu-ray. But yeah, this is a treasure to me to own the special edition Blu-ray here. So again, that's her. That's more of a less cartoonish one. You see how she wears gloves? And I think she, like, black. Uh, I don't know if they're, like, yeah, they look like leather. But I think she wears, like, a leather apron, too. Like, she tries to do everything, like, professional. You see that? Takashi Miike. It says Miike Takashi. I don't know why. Backwards there, but... And even on the Blu-ray, it has that needle. Okay, there's a little thing here, but it basically says on the inside what it says on the back of it, I think. So this is just an advertisement for more of their movies, and it says American Werewolf in London. It says join the cult cinema, art house cinema. So let's read this and see if it's close to anything I said. It says, One of the most notorious J-horror, Japanese horror films ever made. Takashi Miike's audition exploded onto the festival circuit at the turn of the century to a chorus of awards and praise. And I think this was in 1999, which was just an amazing time. <laughs> the film would catapult Miike into the international scene and pave the way for such other genre delights as Itchy the Killer and Happiness of the Katakuris. Recent widower, Shigeharu Ayama, Ayo, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but anyways, this is the, the guy, is advertised by his son, or advised by his son, so I guess, yeah, he has a son, I said friend, I thought, but, so maybe that's who saves him in the end, I don't remember, he's advised by his son to find a new wife. So he seeks the advice of a colleague, having been out of the dating scene for many years. They take advantage of their position in a film company by staging an audition to find the perfect woman, interviewing a series of women. He becomes enchanted by Asami, that's her name, Asami, a quiet 24-year-old woman who is immediately responsive to his charms. But soon things take a very dark and twisted turn as we find that Asami isn't what she seems to be. Pulling the audience into a story that will lead to one of the most harrowing climaxes in cinema history, Miike 
twists and turns us through delirious editing and shocking visuals for one of the most depraved nightmares of all time. And yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, the climax and the whole, the whole build up to this, like I said at the very beginning, if you just saw the beginning of the movie, you could be like, oh, it's just like a nice romance or whatever and then it just like slowly just gets darker and it's like before you know it, it's like man this is one of the sickest movies i've seen but no i think really kind of like a general audience could love this i mean if you can stand some blood and stuff and some nasty like i said like the guy without his limbs like lapping at vomit and stuff it's gross but i mean i've seen a lot worse stuff it's you know there's not a lot of guts and stuff i don't think but Ugh, yeah. But yeah, that final climax when she's got the guy that was in love with her and she's, like, enjoying torturing him. It's like, man, I almost feel like I've met some people like that in this life. <laughs> there, there are some crazies, but you definitely gotta check this out if you're a fan of horror. Yes, you'll have to watch it with subtitles, but it's totally worth it. So, this is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. I've seen a ton of them. And there's something, you know, about the story and, and everything that just sticks out about this. Really unique. So, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Peace out.